Hi, I'm Brant at Crocker Farm, and this is an interesting stoneware mug. Um, probably made to commemorate uh, the centennial of America. Um, it was probably made about 1876. Uh, on the front is one of the iconic images of um, the United States, the Liberty Bell. You've got a pretty pronounced, uh, you know, drawn in crack here. Uh, the date 1776 and on either side of the bell is um, this last name Scythers kind of an unusual last name and on the bottom another name Radley and if you look in the 1880 census the only couple in the entire country with this last name uh, at least indexed with that last name um, was a couple living in Philadelphia uh, where the Liberty Bell uh, currently resides and has always resided. And um, the man in the couple, Charles Scythers, was a tavern keeper. And if you dig deeper in uh, city directories and also some tax records and things, you find that not only was he a tavern keeper, but he was specifically involved in selling lager beer. And um, lager uh, really hadn't come over to America until the mid 19th century. It's a bottom, it's a bottom fermented um, beer, unlike ale, which is a top fermented beer. And for various reasons, this was not really pr uh, produced widely in America until the mid 19th century. The first major brewery doing so was actually in Philadelphia. Um, and uh, if we move on to the name on the bottom, uh, names that appear on the bottom of stoneware are pretty much always uh, the potter. And um, in this case, uh, there was a potter in Philadelphia named Aaron Radley. And um, it's also an unusual name in American stoneware. Uh, other than this guy's probable brother, I'm not aware of any other potters in the country with that last name, though there may be uh, some uh, engaged in other forms of pottery. But as far as stoneware potters go, um, those two guys are the only ones I'm aware of. And uh, Aaron Radley, uh, I actually had um, dug up some pretty good biographical information on him. He was born in 1828 in Albany, New York. And um, he probably learned his trade in West Troy, New York. Those are both stoneware hotbeds. Um, he actually shows up in um, Warren Broderick and William Balk's book on Albany and Albany area stoneware as a potter they found working in West Troy uh, in the 1850s and 1860s and it was in the 1860s that he got out of West Troy and he moved down to Philadelphia where he was probably working at the Remy Pottery um, which was a, a titanic uh, stoneware shop. And um, what's interesting is this guy Radley was involved in a stoneware concern that has completely um, uh, sort of been swallowed up by history. I've never heard of it and I doubt anyone in the world has heard of it uh, these days, but um, the pottery was known as Salinger, Radley, and McCusker, at least for a period. And um, Salinger and McCusker were both cigar makers, so it's an interesting situation where uh, that you do see in American stoneware, where people who were merchants um, that had nothing to do with producing pottery um, decide to contract with the potter and go out, strike out on their own, and start making stoneware. And um, in this case, these guys were working in the Fort Richmond area of Philadelphia, and um, they were competing with the Remy Pottery, which was located pretty nearby. Uh, and their pottery was in existence right around the time of the um, American Centennial. So it's my belief that this mug was made um, at their pottery or um, some incarnation of it, um, particularly with the signature Radley on the bottom, something he probably wouldn't have done at someone else's pottery if he was working for Remy or some other guy. Um, and this is just a really interesting case study in Philadelphia stoneware about, um, you know, a potter that no one even remembers, but who, for whatever reason, thought that he could 
make a pretty good living competing with one of the biggest stoneware potteries in the entire country, really in the history of the United States. And it's also just an interesting window into the lives of potters who um, seem quick to give friends or relatives pieces inscribed with their names. Um, and the, in this case, you know, I would not be surprised if this guy Radley, um, you know, was a frequenter of Scyther's Bar, liked to go there and get lager himself, um, and who gave this man, the tavern keeper, um, a mug that he could sit there every night and drink his lager out of. So, um, you know, this is the kind of piece we really get into, and, um, you know, even as a kid, uh, when I didn't know much about stoneware, I knew that stoneware mugs were some of the rarest examples of American stoneware there are. And uh, I still really like them and I just think this is a great piece.